they'll take this one, not. Okay. Awesome. Jorn is now in Nashville. I, I was I was hoping to get there, but I uh, got sick that day. Okay. And I just Jay's headed going home. To, Jay's going to see him uh, in August. August. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I hope to get there at some point. Okay. And you got to pick a pot out too. Go with the blue or the red. Can I use? Is this big enough? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's Isabella's. That's Isabella's pot. That's cool. <laughs> I was excited that I was my first bonsai in. So that's the first stage is we've got to get these trees out of the pots and we've got to bare root them and comb out the roots and see what we've got. So um, you'll have two bins here. So what you want to do, you've probably seen my repotting videos. Uh, you start at the center of the tree, gently tease the roots outwards. Like, oh, see, my hair's all tangled. <laughs> but that's what you want to do. Uh, any crossing roots, a root system, not only do they take in moisture, but they take in air. They need oxygen around the roots. It's very important for the tree. That's why a, a tree in waterlogged soil won't do well because it's not getting enough oxygen. There's a balance between water and oxygen that's important. So you want that sweet zone. So yeah, just gently tease out your roots. Try not to break any at first. I mean, we're gonna be pruning it anyway, but. Another thing with bonsai soil, you know, my wife's always saying, oh, why do you use that soil? You always have to be out there watering it. And the reason is, in the middle of the summer, bonsai soil is a pain in the neck because it dries out fairly quickly. But in fall weather, when it's rainy, cold, that soil is perfect. You can, you can always water more, but you can't water less some days. So it's better to have a soil dry out too quickly and then have to water it more often than to have a soil that holds too much water and then the roots start rotting. Because it just, that's my philosophy anyway. So there's lots of fine roots in here, which is good. That's what I'm seeing so far. So anyway, that Brazilian rain tree of Jerome's from the bonsai supply, I said I was hoping to see it at the U.S. National Show, and he said, well, that's the plan, is that someday it'll be in the U.S. National Show. So, yeah, just gently, the roots that are wrapping around the outside of the pot, just sort of try and untangle them if you can. If you rip some of them, it's not that critical. As long as you end up with 80% of them in good shape. Always deal with the worst, right. worst parts of your roots first. Yes, the uh, most obvious issue is probably this big one. Yeah. That splits into three that are close to the same, well, the back of the guess. Yeah. yeah. Can do there's two options you can see it goes around twice and this is probably because most cuttings start off in a little tiny pod or plug 
and then they're pottered up and pottered up and pottered up. So the roots never are really sorted out. They just... So I'm going to try and untangle it, and I don't know if I'll be successful. But I, I can't live with that. And, and again, it may be a case of doing as much as I can. And sometimes, you know, you're untangling roots and they break, and it's like, well, sometimes you're successful. Now, I don't think, you know, this is never going to be part of the radial root system, but as long as it's not curled around the trunk, I'll be happy. It's really tangled. Okay. So, you can see I've kind of untangled it, and if I were to cut it off, I do have a lot of roots under here, but you can see I lose the thickness in my trunk. I wouldn't want to develop this as my root base here. I'm going to get that undercut. It's going to go from skinny to trunk to thick. So I've kind of got to develop my root base up here where it's still thick by trunk. So that's as much as I can really untangle it. Uh, my hope would be you can see a root developing out here, develop this root and then cut it off. I can cut part of it off now quite safely, which I'll do. I think I'm safe to cut about here. I'm guessing, I think. I've done it before in a Brazilian rain tree. So I'm going to do it here. Here I go. Big cut coming up. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so that, that wasn't too much. That, that's not a whole lot of root off. And you can see that in future, if I get roots growing out here, I can and strengthen up other parts of the root system which will grow this can eventually be removed totally so it's just something i got to keep in mind that that's my goal is to get rid of that curly root eventually now there's another root here that's too high in the root plane but i want to keep it for now and that would be some if i get roots developing down lower this will be taken off in the future just because i'm being cautious if this was a maple or something no problem i just cut everything off but this is a Brazilian rain tree. So the other root, this is the tap root. You can see it goes in line with the trunk, hit the bottom of the pot, and then it curls around. So I'm going to also, it, then it divides and goes off to the side. So I'm also going to remove that. And then I'm trying to develop more roots up here. So where do I take this off? Well, if I look at it, um, Oh, there's a root tangled in there. Wow, really tangled. Okay, uh, most of the roots come off around here, so I could safely prune it off here. So here I go, like that. So again, you know, I've lost a lot of the root system, but there's still a lot of roots coming from those roots that will keep it alive. And then the rest is just. Kind of, it's no problem pruning roots this size. They're not going to die off or anything. So I just come in, prune them. <laughs> roots are funny. You can have the sharp, sharpest cutters in the world, and they're still hard to cut through because they're soft and fleshy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and this one, again, I'm going to shorten it, keeping, you know, part of it. I'll shorten it to here. And that is about all I can do to the roots at this point in time. And that's quite a bit. You can see how much I've taken off versus the tree. So this tree is going to struggle for a while, but I don't think it'll die. I think it has enough roots to sustain itself. And I may do a bit of pruning up top too, which will reduce the load on the roots. So there's a lot of, I haven't talked about branching yet, but um, uh, there's a lot of, if you look at these two lowest branches, I've got one branch above another. So you would pick your best one of those. I've got two branches going from one spot here. So again, I'd pick my best branch, remove the other one. Um, anything going in towards the center of the tree, generally you remove so everything's fanning and flowing out outwards. I would cut each of these major roots yeah kind of about here okay. leaving some of them on yeah. that will reduce it a lot 
And again, the trees may sulk for quite a while. Yeah. And you have to really take care of them, mist them, water them carefully. All right. Oh, it went down there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Still wrapped around. Once you have a root system sorted out, bonsai is so much easier. <laughs> You're just developing that root system. There's no more big cuts and no more prying our roots and sorting them out. It gets so much nicer. It's just this initial work that is risky and uh, tough. Mm -hmm. Ours is maybe a little high, but you can always mound the soil up too. Okay. We can't really take much more off, can we? Okay, nope. yeah. Okay. So we'll have to mound the soil up a bit. And the girls, yeah, I think we'll have to do a little mounding. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not too bad. Isabella, I love your pot, but my plant is not right for it. So it'll be number two, and I love it. It's so beautiful. Once you got your drainage <laughs> screens in, and then you're going to place the tree on that. It doesn't have to be very thick. There's nothing wrong with putting your roots right against the bottom of the pot if you worry about the height, okay. and then fill the soil in around it. So actually, I would do that for most of our trees. Don't add a drainage layer. I'll retract that statement. <laughs> Let's uh, put our trees in the bottom of the pot and then comb out the roots the best you can, nice and radial. Just uh, use your road hook, try and tease them out, and then we'll add the soil in around it. That way it'll get the trees as low as possible in the pot. Now a tree like this, you can see there's not enough roots that you could wire the tree in the pot, so we might have to do something different. And what I've done in with jades in that, I should show you, is you run the wires up from the drainage holes and then you coil them around the trunk. And what that does is it holds the tree in the pot without actually using the roots. So oh, it's right. just like as if someone was holding the tree. <laughs> And I would recommend doing that for, especially if you're driving with the tree. Okay. I guess it doesn't hurt to do that right now. So what I'm going to do is, is I've got this wire now and I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to wrap it, oops, I'm going to wrap it around the trunk. And remember how I said Brazilian rain trees don't like wire? <laughs> Um, we got to be really careful uh, because this tree will grow into the wire. And then the other one, generally in bonsai you don't cross wires, it looks ugly. But in this case I will because this is just purely for function. And even once the tree starts growing, you can always cut the wire away. So I made this wire way too long. But hopefully, you can see there, oh, yeah. the tree supported in the pot fairly well. Like, it's not good to have the tree wiggling around in the wind or that while it's developing roots, but it's going to stay in the pot until you get home anyway. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Once the soil gets in here, it'll be a little more stable. But that's, that's what I do on jades. They're extremely top heavy. Oh, there's, yeah. you, there's no roots on jades to wire them into the pot, so you've got to wrap it around the trunk to support them. Well, that doesn't screw on, okay. Anyway, so that'll be fine. So let's get everyone's tree in the pot. We're doing okay for time now.
Yeah, it's all surrounding the roots. You don't want any air pockets in there. Get t-shirts made. Sorry, Madeline. Yeah, exactly. Oops, sorry, Madeline. <laughs> Kind of push the rock down so it's nice and firm in the soil and it'll do two things it'll help stop evaporation and it also keeps the tree nice and stable in the pot i'm going to prune this tree so you can see these are called internodes uh, the space between here nothing will ever grow from this wood in between these spaces so if I was to prune this branch, if I just wanted to tip off, I would go halfway between here and cut it like that. So that's my stub. That stub will die back and then it'll continue growing from here. That's still too high, so I'm going to, I'm going to use directional pruning. So I've got a, a leaf fanning outwards back here and one fanning outwards this direction, which is perfect. So I'm going to prune just above those two, halfway, like that leaving my stub that'll die back and these will continue growing. Um, these branches have had the same thing. So they are going to, they've been pruned, they're going to die back to the next leaf node and then a branch will grow. So these stubs, once they've dried up, they can be pruned off flush with the, uh, the branch. But until then, just leave them on. Hi, I'm Jeff and this is my tree. Hi, I'm Barb, and this is my tree. Hi, I'm Joe, and this is my tree. Hi, I'm Nigel, and this is my tree. Hi, I'm Jay, and this is my tree. Here is the participants in the Brazilian Rain Tree Workshop with their trees. They look awesome. They're fantastic trees. So best of luck growing them. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope you send me updates. That would oh, be awesome. Sure.